during that time, what was some of the best advice, aside from that line in Taxi, <laughs> that's excellent, <laughs> love the show, um, and what was some of the worst advice that you got? You don't have to tell you names, but like, what were some things that were just so cliche and it, it's just like, no, this is like a power speech that's not going to go And then some stuff that was like, wow, that's really interesting. That like in that time frame? Yeah. When that sort of like, I mean, I want to hmm. say it's maybe more of a dip, it sounds like, and yeah. then you came out of a yeah. dip. Yeah, definitely a dip. Uh, Cause some people are full of well-intentioned advice, and it just is like, no, that's not going to work. But then others have interesting points. <laughs> you know what? The best piece of advice I got during that time was from my girlfriend at the time. And she said, you should just write a movie and then sell it to a studio. And then you can find out how it all really works. And that's why I wrote my first script. <laughs> and that was a really great piece of advice. Um, and I guess because of me thinking of it that simply, I was able to sell my first script. <laughs> like maybe that's why. I don't know. I mean, it's not. It's obviously not that easy, but in my head it was. And so I wrote this thing and we got it out and done. Um, that was probably the best piece. Worst piece. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I mean, there were there were there were. There were bad things said to me. Hmm. weren't necessarily advice. <laughs> like nobody ever said, you know, go home, kid. You bother me. But I don't know if I got a piece of bad advice. Mm -hmm. But I did get that. I did get that advice, and I decided to write. And we that we sold that script to Columbia. From the time that she told you that, how did, how much time went by when you started writing that script? Next day. Next day, wow. This is before Starbucks or no? Starbucks yeah. was around. Wow. <laughs> Did the world exist before Starbucks? There probably was Starbucks, but yeah. I don't drink coffee. So oh, you don't? Okay. Yeah, I okay. can't. I'm one of those weirdos that doesn't. So, uh, so, so you, where did you start writing the script? Because there was I had Starbucks, a so. friend uh -huh. who was an aspiring writer, and he had Final Draft. So I went to him, and I said, hey, man. I want to write a script. And he was like, you want a what? <laughs> I said, just give me the final draft, show me how it works. He's like, that's not how final draft works. I was like, dude, whatever, just, you know, I just, just show me how it works. So he taught me how it works. He's like, you just do that and hit the tab and then write the thing. He's like, all right. So what are you going to write? I'm like, I don't know. I just want to write a script. I'm going to write a script. But you didn't have an idea? No, at the like time. like floating around now? No, I was like, I'm just going to write one. I didn't read them all my life. Can't be that hard. Right. It's hard, but <laughs> I just figured, just write a script, just start. Like, what, what am I doing? I'm sitting here, I'm staring at a phone that doesn't ring. You know, phone's not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I could be sitting here a year from now, and me and my phone can be hanging out together, <laughs> or I could be sitting here a year from now, and me and my phone could be hanging out with a script that I wrote. So I started writing. And um, I was like, I just want to figure out something that will work. And at the time, it was like, uh, you had all these, uh, like, uh, it was like the teen stuff was hot. So this is like post Scream. Right. This is like Cruel Intentions. And, you know, I know what you did last summer right, when the right, lights right. went off in Georgia or whatever. <laughs> uh, so I was like, all right. So they're making this stuff, and everything was in high school. So I was like, okay, I'll put something in college. All right, what's the story? They all seem to be horrors and thrillers. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I started looking at films that were really, really popular, like in the 80s. I take that story, that basic idea, set it in college now. <laughs> Now I got a thing that's just a proven track record that works, but then I got this other thing and it's new and it's fresh and it's different. And that became 
the first script that became I Would Die For You. It was about a guy going to Santa Barbara, UC Santa Barbara, and had a girlfriend, and life was good, and a buddy of his in his hometown was getting married. So he goes back to his hometown for the wedding, without his girlfriend, because she was off doing whatever, and uh, he runs into his ex-girlfriend from high school. And she and he end up, you know, and uh, he leaves. He says, you know, it's a mistake, whatever. It's good to see you. He goes back to his life in UC Santa Barbara, turns around, there's the ex-girlfriend. Hey, how are you? What's up? Is this your girlfriend? Oh my God, she's so great. Now the girlfriend loves the ex-girlfriend and he's in hell. And that became, that became I Would Die For You. And uh, Columbia bought that up. <laughs> we had a good time with it. It was fun. How long did it take you to write it? <sighs> I hate this question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's good. It's good. It's good. Uh, three weeks. Three weeks. Wow. Yeah. How many drafts did you do? Before I sold it? Mm -hmm. Three, maybe four. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't a lot. I didn't do a lot of drafts. <laughs> now, are you working as an actor at this time? Or you have an odd job? Or are you... No, no, no. I'm, um, I'm, I've now sort of moved into the whole, like, filmmaking scenario. So, um, a buddy of mine named James Langtine got together and we created a production company and we were working on films that I write and direct and star in and we shot our first one, This Is Now, back in April and now we're working on our second thriller coming out in October. Um, and we've got plans for the third film we want to shoot next spring. Um, so yeah, that's 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 where I'm at now. Um, at that time, though, like, so how did you get access to Pitch Columbia? Like, who, who did oh, you, who did oh, 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 yeah. Okay, sorry. Oh no. Problem. Then yes, I was still sort of making a, a living as an actor, you know, and you know, yeah, I there were, by that time I had done Murder One and NYPD Blue, so there were like really healthy residuals floating around. Um, I got a residual from Murder One one year, not a year, it was like one day I just went and it was a residual, it was like $15,000 from Murder One. I was like, whoa, whoa, I bought a car, it was great. Um, so that was where that was at that time. Um, and I had a friend who was a comedian and he had a buddy who was a manager, a literary manager. And I called my comedian friend up, his name's Ahmed, Ahmed Ahmed. And he says, hey, man, I, said, I got the script, man. I'm, I think it's really good. I want to sell it. He's like, you should call Brian, dude. Brian's a manager now. You should call him up. Give me your script. See what you can do. I was like, okay. So I sent it to Brian. And Brian was like, so what do you want to do? I was like, dude, I don't care. Like, I don't care if they want to turn it into pigs on the moon. It'll be pigs on the moon. I don't care. I just want to sell the thing. I, I want to find out how it works. Because nobody will tell me how it works. This whole thing. So I can find out how everything works. He was like, all right, cool. So he sat, he read it, gave me some notes, went back and forth through the notes. Um, and so then once he was happy with it, he decided to do like a soft, what do they call it? Not pitch. When the agents and managers, they send it out. I don't know, soft send out, I don't know. It's, they have a name for it, I can't remember. But he sent it out to a few people as opposed to like a blanket thing, you know. Because usually, you know, you, you go wide with it. You send it out to all the studios and all the production companies and you see who bites. So he's like, I'm going to send it out to people I know first. See what they think. See how it plays. And then we'll go bigger. I was like, all right, cool. So at the time, there was a production company. I cannot remember the name of the production company. They had a deal at Warner Brothers. And the executive at the production company was Channing Dungey. And Channing is actually now, I believe she's the head of drama at ABC now. Um, but she read it and she was like, this is good, I like this. I wanna go out with it. And she did the same thing Brian did. She was like, I'm not gonna go wide, I'm just gonna, I got a friend, I'm gonna see how it plays. So she sent it to a woman named Carrie Richmond. And Carrie was an executive at Columbia at Sony. So she took it to Carrie. 
And Carrie read it, and Carrie was like, I like it. It's good. Has anybody else seen it? She's like, no, nobody's seen it, not yet. I'll tell you what, we're going to make a preemptive thing. We're going to make an option, and let's do it. Wow. And we did it. And that's how the first one happened. See? I didn't want to be vague about it. That's how it actually right, happened. Right. Thank you for the detail. <laughs> that's how it actually happened. So it wasn't like, you know, there wasn't like a big sort of, what do they call it? Uh, dos Machina. It wasn't like a big thing that just sort of like landed. You know, CAA didn't just show up and go, oh, that didn't happen. <laughs> it was the little manager and he knew some folks and those knew some folks and then everybody loved the script. It all came back to, we like this script. Uh, and as I've continued, I've realized it all comes down to that. It all comes down to the words on these pieces of paper. We dig those, so let's see what we can do. That's what it's always come down to, in my experience. So 